And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's beautiful, it is Sunday. And yes, we got a soft inflation report. Yields are falling, futures are spiking, NASDAQ running up to the highs here. Still, you know, still uh, caught at our 786. So we'll see if we got potential for pullback there. We'll check in on Dixie. We'll take a look at some of the Bitcoin underlying market dynamics. And hey, the Standard Chartered Bank says Bitcoin's going to hit 120,000 by the end of 2024. Uh, previously, they said it would reach 100,000. Um, and this year, they said 50,000 by the end of this year and up to 120,000 by the end of 2024. Standard Chartered Bank, don't know if I, how much I trust them, um, but they increased their Bitcoin price target based off of several factors, one of them being the banking sector crisis. And they said, quote, we now think this estimate is too conservative. We thought, or sorry, we therefore see upside to our end 2024 target. I'll leave a link in the description below here if you guys want to check that out on Coindesk. Uh, CME Fed watch tool now pricing in a 92.4% chance of that quarter percent rate hike on July 26, next major date. By the way, inflation numbers, uh, just so you got them here, breaking news. Yep, inflation at 3% year over year below expectations of 3.1. Core CPI inflation fell to 4.8% below expectations of 5%. This is the first time core CPI has come in below 5% since December 2021. So a 26-month battle may, uh, you know, against inflation may finally be nearing its end, says the Kobisi letter. I don't know if I agree with them yet. I uh, don't, but they do put out a nice little report there on the inflation numbers. What else did I hear? Uh, this morning, you had uh, eggs down 7.3%, bacon down 3.5%, and that's the story today, uh, disinflation story, and I would expect PPI to fall in line with that. Also, um, I don't think we are going to see the Fed move, yeah, in their position with that rate hike coming in at the end of July. So, and also, what do we have? Housing uh, starting to come back up, earnings coming back up. That's what the Fed's going to be looking at. And the service sector, still relatively hot. Um, super core data came out lower than expected. So, should we call it the CP Live report or should we call it the disinflation report? Um, whatever it is, uh, the numbers don't lie, do they? No, um, you can see it in the charts. And that's why we use technical analysis. What is TA? Well, what is TA? It's tra a trading discipline employed to evaluate investments and identify trading opportunities by analyzing statistical trends gathered from trading activities such as price movement and volume. I thought I'd just share that with you guys. Some basic principles here. Uh, markets alternate between range expansion and range contraction. Uh, trend continuation is more likely than a reversal. Momentum precedes price and trends in, in one of two ways. A big climax, a blow off top, or kind of a roll over. And I would agree with that little analysis. If you want to learn more about how to grow your crypto wealth using TA, well, check out Crypt Courses. There's a link in the description below. Just click here, start for free and begin your journey on becoming a highly profitable trader. Um, what else did I, yeah, and something to note on the CPLI report, this is the consumer price index. For all items in the US city average, well, you can see it's steadily gone up since 1992, so I don't see any disinflation there. Um, <clears throat> we got crypt courses, we've got Crypto, yeah, so join Crypt Courses. Link is in the description below. FTT, um, I forgot what's happening exactly with that one, but on a bit of a run. STX up 8%, like to see that. Uh, and what's another big mover? Ave, we've been talking about those. Ave, Comp, BCH, all the big ones uh, coming back with a vengeance. Even Pepe up 3% today, so. This disinflation narrative is boding well for Bitcoin and crypto in general as a whole and bringing us to our four hour range, which by the way, 
um, is still holding pat, still holding tight here. And let's make it a little more clear. So uh, call it 31-1 to the upside. And, uh, you know, I think we could tighten the range up a little bit, guys. Do you guys want to tighten up the range? Well, um, if you're a little more aggressive, you know, four hour back above 31,000, probably going to get a move and then a four hour below 29.9 or call it 30,000. Might goose the odds in the favor of the bulls right now um, as well. I think we can play in the range uh, perhaps one more time. And this is an ascending triangle, again, using shapes and formations to form a statistical analysis. Technically speaking, they have a 75% chance of breaking out to the upside. And they break when they get about 75% full. Uh, you'd have the silver cross present, uh, point for the bulls there. Uh, just closing below this prior wick. Yeah, this, this one's probably good enough to do it for me. Uh, call it, call it 30, call it 29, nine, um, and front runnable, even right here at 30,300, a lot of pivots are going to line up around that number 30,300. Uh, but as I mentioned, 75% chance of breaking out to the upside. Um, and, uh, where's the measure move bring us up to, well, 32, 137, um, I do think that would be in the cards there. That's also probably going to line up right with your 1618 fib. Nice confluence right there. So uh, that is short term on the hourly. What do we have? Silver cross present, leaning to the upside. You know, we've been caught in, a, caught in the sandpaper range for some time. I do think it could go on for a bit more. Um, what will... Goose the odds in the favor of the Bears or the Bulls on the daily time frame. Specifically, you want to see expansion back above 25%. Currently, momentum is crossed back to the upside. Disinflation report, again, helping out the Bulls. That's the story of the day. Bacon and eggs going down. I don't believe it. At Costco, there was an egg shortage. You know, life was pretty much over for me at that point. No, just kidding. Uh, checking in on Bitcoin dominance, uh, hiking it up slowly but surely. 51.5% uh, target is 54 for a short-term pullback. And perhaps we're getting into that uh, area, but nothing, nothing to write home about here, at least on the daily time frame. Just inching its way onwards and upwards. Momentum is crossed back up. So boating well for Bitcoin at the moment. Let's check in on Tether Dominance, which we did talk about this. Very specifically, I said uh, probably going to have one more spike down for Tether Dominance. And as long as we are uh, holding this trend line, well, it's not going to bode well for necessarily the altcoin market. But as this comes down, altcoins are getting a chance to breathe here. And we could get a continuation drive off of that silver cross. Again, using the exponential moving averages as a governor there, as long as the nine is gover governing there on the daily time frame, the pressure is on the downside, which bodes well for uh, the altcoins, at least the stronger ones, I would say. Um, let's see, what else do we want to wrap up the day? Today is... Tuesday? Is it Tuesday? The days are flying by. Got up early this morning, guys. Um, what else? Following up on Dixie, hitting the bottom side of the range as we per, not predicted, but uh, as the TA outlined that uh, statistically it was in favor of a move to the downside based off the bearish divergence on the weekly time frame. And uh, where does this come down? And probably does line up with a bounce for gold to our target. So remember, dollar down, good for risk assets. NASDAQ, S&P and Dow all taking a leg up today. VIX is also coming down or uh, it's been bouncing off this green box of peace and prosperity and death and despair. VIX goes up, stocks go down. Typically, that's how it works. We do tend to get some bounces off this area, but if we start to lose this area, and I, I guess the next stop down is gonna be this level at 13.3, and that would provide for some more upside on NASDAQ, I would say, um, wrapping it up on Bitcoin, because we've been covering pretty much the same thing day in and day out, and congratulations, guys, if you've stuck around this long and learned some TA, and uh, you've been here, thank you. Thank you guys for liking and subscribing to the channel. 
if you do find the information valuable or helpful. So I think I wrapped up my thoughts on Bitcoin daily. Uh, the week is not over. We're midweek. And yeah, just looking for resolution of the range on the four hour. And we're selling off on the first pass. Selling off on the first pass, which is uh, kind of what I what I suspected. Um, but again, where does that likely to break? That would be Friday. That would be Friday. So remember, today's tur turnaround Tuesday, Wednesday PPI, Thursday's typically a down day. And then do we rally into the weekend, close it out, make it a strong week higher? We want to see a weekly closure back above 31.5, or it's going to be more consolidation. Volatility is just beginning to expand on the weekly, so this can take some time for the move to play out to the upside or the downside. But I do like this read actually also. First pass on the bullish control zone after being away from it for some time. We sold off, and now we're getting back up in there, or we're heading back up to the bullish control zone. If we can get the RSI back in that area, the bulls will assume control on the weekly time frame. And that is going to look good for a nice uh, markup on Bitcoin. Um, short term, I am looking for some selling pressure to come in on the daily time frame. Right at that, um, well, this level probably first, 32.1. Yeah, 32.1, something like that. That's probably going to be your first leg of resistance. Yeah, that's lining up just perfect right there based off of the candle bodies and then next target 32.8 all right that's it out of me today guys i guess i'll circle up on one move i am looking at on ave uh, that i did identify yesterday in the evening time uh, which was a bit of a inverted head and shoulders and a break of a trend line here so where do you likely go after breaking a trend line like this? Low volatility, silver cross. Usually you head right up to that 618. So that was the shorter term move, but the longer term move off of the head and shoulders, which I would almost call like this. Uh, from the neckline to the bottom of the head. So what is this head and shoulders shoulder call it a double head shoulder broke out of the neckline and where does the measure move take you so up to uh 78 bucks so did we quite get it not quite there yet invalidation on the move of course is closing back below the shoulder here at 72 bucks so has it already played out um perhaps yes but another thing in confluence here, you could be looking at this as a major uh, descending triangle with a break out here. And uh, that could see a little bit higher uh, measure move back to the top side of the range. Probably somewhere in this zone um, is all going to be fair and good game for a little bit of a selling pressure. And well, if Ave wants to continue the trend onwards and upwards and just taking it back a step from the weekly time frame, we do have a breakout of the weekly trend and likely continuations up to the green 55, which is coming in here at 87.59. Um, if uh, we can get above that region, next target 107, and that's going to be the big one where potentially Ave could, you know, really start to run. And I'd be targeting a move all the way up to 144. Okay, that's it out of me on this one. BCH, another top performer. Breaking this flying little pennant, bull flag, whatever you want to call it. And measure move is going to be back to the top side of the range at 326 off of this one. This one's losing some steam, I would say. Um, for our volatility play uh, was nice right there. A couple buys off that green 55. But, uh, you know, move seems to be failing. And failure on this one is going to be back below this pivot at 273. 
If you're a little more aggressive, a little more conservative, you know, you wait for a break back below that pivot, uh, 267. And I'd call it a failed rally, uh, but that one's probably good enough for me at 273. That's it for BCH. Any other potentials on the board with good setups? Yeah, stacks. Just breaking the trend here on this one. You know, massive hidden bullish divergence. Where does this one going to get us? Where is it going to get us? Is it going to follow in line with the rest? So again, sell, sold off, getting back to the bullish control zone on the four-hour time frame in the critical zone. Volatility is increasing. This is all what you typically want to see for, you know, a nice little markup on stacks or at least for a bounce. Um, a pretty good one at that. Actually, just looking back from the all-time high in the breakout here. I remember this breakout was a little bit odd. Uh, needless to say, this one back over here. Oh, I just wanted to see measure move wise, where did the bounce head up to the not 0.5? The next target would be that 618. Um, overall for a, a, you know, retracement bounce, if we are going to bounce holding the two, three, six, looking good there also. So first target 77, second target 88 cents. And then the full measure move probably going to head up all the way up there. And that lo and behold was probably going to be right in line. Yeah. With that, uh, retracement. So Right in line with the 1618 and the hidden bullish divergence drives, which are coming back from this pivot. So a lot of color on the screen. I'm going to try and explain this in a quick second here. But what you can see is compared to this low, you have stop and reverse points. So I'm going to mark them off here. Could you call that a low? Could you call that a low? Potentially, yes, you could. So one, two, three, four. So using our four drive philosophy, which we go over this in Bitcoin 101, how to grow your crypto wealth using TA. Again, check out the course in the description below. But um, the four drive philosophy, we're talking about hidden bullish divergence. Again, when price is making higher lows, alongside the RSI making lower lows. And again, if you want the bullish and bearish divergence cheat sheet, you can go to bitcoinadvisors.com and go to the resource center. There's also a link in the description below and go right down here to the bullish divergence cheat sheet. Also learn how to set up trading view, um, just like I have it set up. All right, that's it. For the shill and back on to stacks and this hidden bullish divergence which i'm talking about that's why i brought this up is this cheat sheet right here so hidden bullish divergence this is a very powerful powerful uh item to learn hidden divergence in the context of a downtrend price is going to make lower highs the rsi is making higher highs. that's bearish divergence in an uptrend price is making higher lows rsi is making a lower low so again what we're looking for is the rsi making lower lows and the price making higher lows so you got all the way coming back from this pivot you can see the slew of higher lows in price alongside the slew of lower lows and the four drive philosophy is going to get us so one, two, three, four, a move to the one, six, one, eight fib off the prior high, which is going to be either from this high right here, based off the four drive philosophy, we are targeting a conservative move up to 72 cents. If you use this as the prior high, you're going to get a higher target at 83 cents. I think that's the one that we want to, to go for. That That's the big one, breaking the town trend. And Stacks has been rather bullish. You also have the four-hour time frame. Starting to get all the major moving averages 
position to cross to the upside. So what you'd want to see is these cross to the upside, the green, or the yellow crosses the green 55, all these cross to the upside, and then we maintain the higher lows above this pivot coming in at uh, 65 cents. And that is going to look good for a move up to, you know, probably our target at the 1618 fib. I am going to even post this on our discord. I hope you guys have a blessed nightly favor day. That's it out of me today. Checking in on one last thing, the ETH Bitcoin chart. As people want to know, when are my Ethereum's going to skyrocket to the moon? And here is what I would say is that we're going to remain bearish with the bearish bias on Ethereum as long as we are below uh, really this pivot. And uh, secondarily, this last lower high on the daily time frame, we want to see a daily reversal on ETH Bitcoin for Ethereum to start to pick itself up. And I do believe it will happen at some point. It's just a matter of when probably when Bitcoin dominance starts to come down. Um, any others? I want to check in on Matic putting up a royal assault at that green 55 on the daily. Is it going to get pushed back on the first pass? Yes, I'd probably say so. Probably going to get pushed back on the first pass. And that's that. All right. So I think with that, we're going to conclude today's disinflation report. Remember, your eggs and your bacon's going down. Don't don't believe them, guys. Don't believe them. Because um, you know the prices at the stores. They are not going down. That's for sure. All right. Have a blessed day. Take care.